Bizarre Brain Comics. <laughs> ah. Hello, Gary here for Bizarre Brain Comics. This is where I like to take a look at some older comics, talk a little bit about the characters and creators, and examine the stories and the art. This time, we're going way back, and this is... part of our spooky Halloween fest. We're going back to the 1950s for Tales from the Crypt. And this particular book is, uh, is Tales from the Crypt, the EC Archives, Volume 1. From Dark Horse Comics, and we're going to take take a look at a story from issue twenty, done by Al Feldstein. So let's take a look inside the big book of knowledge and see what it has to say for Tales of the Crypt. No, no, here we go. This is Tales from the Crypt, number 20, from 1950, from EC Comics. And drawn and probably written by Al Feldstein, and it's the story, The Thing from the Sea. And this is, and... Tales from the Crypt was created by William Gaines and Al Feldstein. It's a bi-monthly horror anthology comic book from EC Comics, and it ran for a total of 27 issues from 1950 to 1955. The first issue with that title was number 20, the one we're going to be looking at today. And it had previously been published with a, uh, with a few crime titles, then the format changed to horror under the title Crypt of Terror. This was from 17, 18, and 19. Therein, the horror host, the Crypt Keeper, was introduced. And this book ran for a total of 46 issues, that's including the crime titles, uh, under, all, under all its titles. With its sister titles, Haunt of Fear, and Vault of Horror, they were the preeminent horror titles of the pre-code 50s. With its success, many other publishers jumped on the bandwagon with a myriad of copycats of varying degrees of quality. Some of them, which we've uh, shown here, some of them are very good, so, uh, some of them are downright terrible. Um, some have good writing and poor art, some have good art and poor writing, and some of them are pretty damn good, but overall not up to the quality of EC. That's just overall. There are some that are. And the arrival of the Comics Code Authority put an end to these and similar titles because of the unreasoning fear that these and the crime comics would lead to juvenile delinquency. The CCA was established to avoid government censorship because we had that time in uh, 53, 54, I think it was in, the, in 54, when they had the, uh, the congressional hearings on juvenile delinquency and they focused on 
comic books. And that really put the kibosh on a lot of quality, good quality comic books. But it also helped stimulate the, the creativity of the creators involved because they had to come up with some new stuff um, that would uh, uh, fit into the comics code. So, let us take a step back and join Al Feldstein and William Gaines in Tales from the Crypt. And here we have, you can see that cover a little better, Tales from the Crypt. The EC Archives from Dark Horse Comics. This is Volume 1. And this is cover as, uh, I believe, an Al Feldstein cover uh, with the uh, his rendition of our the horror hosts the crypt keeper the vault keeper and the old witch and of course this version of the crypt keeper is not like the better known one from the HBO TV series well, that one was a puppet and <laughs> he was all decaying so here he's he's just a bizarre old man and then here that's Johnny Craig and this is a Johnny Craig cover but this is the cover to Tales from the Crypt number 20 and this is not I try to try to get the glare off that and this is not the uh, the story we're going to cover Okay, and Al Feldstein, I'll just flip it over here so that you can see his stuff. Yeah, the thing from the sea, the Crypt Keeper's Tale. See, he still even has the inside cover ads from the original publication. Uh, see, Al Feldstein's art. Okay, Al Feldstein, he was Brooklyn born. Ha! <laughs> Brooklyn boy, born boy, I can't say that, Brooklyn born boy, uh, and he was from uh, 1925 to 2014, and he loved to draw comic strips as a child, which his mother encouraged by, uh, by taking him to museums and art galleries. A school teacher encouraged him uh, to enter some drawing contests where he won prizes and had him go to the high school of music and art after high school he got on with the Iger shop uh, this is right after uh, Will Eisner left before that it was the uh, Eisner Iger shop uh, doing odd jobs and uh, and eventually drawing his own stories he attended Brooklyn College and the Art Students League, uh, doing night classes there. Uh, and before graduating, he served in in the Army Air Corps in World War II, still working in an artistic capacity. And after that, it was back to comics. He wanted to go back to college and become an art teacher, but he made more money in comics than he could have as a teacher. Uh, he worked on the teen humor books such as Junior and Sonny. And in 1948, he met Bill Gaines and was uh, uh, con contracted to do a teen book for EC. But the teen stuff was canceled before going to press. So he did some Western and crime books uh, and writing and drawing many. Eventually... They started the horror books, which started a craze. Al wrote and drew many of those famous tales. He worked with E.C. and Mad until 1985. So he had a long career with Bill Gaines. So here we go. The Crypt Keeper's Tale. <clears throat> Got to get my Crypt Keeper voice. Well, <laughs> 
I see it's time for me to tell you another spine-tingling tale. One of my vast collection of chillers, which I keep here in the crypt. This story is a favorite of mine. One that I guarantee will make your blood run cold and your hair stand on end. I call it the thing from the sea. <laughs> oh, okay. And this is just a creepy image of this, of this hand reaching for the ship and then has this large number 13 because that plays a part because it takes place in stateroom 13. Here we start with this fellow uh, at, at the last minute get, uh, um, getting passage on a ship to England. And it's called the Ocean Queen. And uh, they're all almost all booked up. There's just one, uh, one berth left and stateroom 13. So, so I hope you're not superstitious. He hurts up and gets in a purser, uh, shows him where, and he tells him, says, Oh, there's. Uh, we've had problems with people staying in thir stateroom 13. They usually can't stay more than one night. And then they have to get out. Uh oh, well, I'm not superstitious and yada, yada, yada. Uh, they don't know what frightens people. And it goes, ah, ghosts, bah. I don't believe in all that stuff. Well, here he is in the stateroom. He meets his, his roommate. His roommate get, takes the upper, upper bunk and he gets the lower bunk. And then at, at night he... During the night, he goes, what the heck? He sees that the porthole is open. And he can smell the sea spray and stuff cause, because it, it had been secured the, the, uh, before they went to bed. And he hears, ah, what's that? And his and his roommate rushes past him. No, no, no. And he's crying. And then he, oh, what the heck is going on? And then he, hear, uh, he So he goes back to bed. I must have had a nightmare. And he thinks he hears his... <clears throat> his uh, roommate get back into his bunk and then he's just moaning through the night. Oh, not a very good sailor, poor chap. So he thinks he's just seasick. The next day he gets up and finds his roommate's not there. And he goes out and he talks with uh, one of the officers, the, the ship's doctor, and finds out that his roommate is in, is in sick bay. <clears throat> yeah. And he, he did not go back to his berth. He, he was found early in the morning, terrified, huddling someplace um, out on the deck in terror. I was, well, that's odd. I could have swore he was. I heard him go back to the bed. So, hmm. So, so that night he goes to bed and he's got the got the room all to himself. And then again, and then again, he is well, uh, awakened in the middle of the night. Uh, Finding that the porthole, which he had securely uh, um, secured the night before, is open, and he hears some moaning coming from the upper berth. So he takes a peek inside, and oh my gosh, what is this horrid-looking thing in there? Keep away, keep away! Reaches for him, and then he gets out of the gets out of the bunk, leaves the cabin, and goes out on deck, and just disappears, just fades away. What the heck? So here he is. He didn't go back to his bunk that uh, <laughs> that night, and he is sleeping on one of the in one of the deck chairs. And the captain finds him and says, "Okay, this is weird. We've got to see what this is." So he, so they decide they're going to stand watch that night. Him him and the captain in his bunk to see in his uh, stateroom to see what's going on. And some really and I haven't talked much about the artwork, but it's some really really nice. Uh, very very strong graphic graphics and pretty good visual storytelling and look at this, this is great shit and uh so they're standing there that night while they're they're, they're staying up uh the porthole pops open with a little bit of uh of uh, sea spray splashes into into the window he quickly says here we go captain Things are beginning to pop. I, ah, the captain takes a look. And, oh, what's this horrid thing? And you spin around and you see the thing. 
I said, that, that's it, Captain. I said, no, no, it can't be you. You're dead. I murdered you. I killed you. So this is the ghost of someone that the captain had killed. And this had been his room and, and his birth. And they never say why he killed him, but uh, captain is chalk white and the, and the captain has a heart attack and dies right there. And the thing uh, passes back out through the porthole and is never seen again. He said, <laughs> and that's the story, dear reader. The captain received the shock of his life, eh? Well, he should have realized you can't get away with murder, not even at sea, on your own ship. Oh, by the way, if you're re you ever really sail the Ocean Queen, ask for stateroom 13. Tell him I sent you. <laughs> oh, oh there, and there we see a great Al Feldstein story. And some some really really beautiful artwork here, and it's not as lovely as, as like Johnny Craig or some uh, um, uh, Wally Wood or some of the others. But it is is just good, solid, beautiful artwork. Now Al, uh, with his editorial duties, Al Feldstein uh, eventually did did less and less of the artwork himself. Uh, mostly just filling in when it was necessary. Plus, uh, they found that some of the uh, the readers actually preferred some of the other artists to Feldstein in, in the horror books. And I think he, he he did a marvelous job. You ought to see some of some of the stuff, some of his uh, uh, sexy ladies in his the teen comics that he did, and uh, some really lovely stuff, uh, good pinup stuff. So that's it. Al Feldstein and the Tales from the Crypt. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and remember, <laughs> oh, my friends, comics are art. <laughs>